Now, the Glasgow derby is back. Celtic will play Rangers on Saturday in their first league fixture for more than four years. It's one of the biggest games on the planet and highly anticipated by both sets of fans. But would Scotland be better off without it? The tribal passion that draws supporters from all over the world, say critics, also provides a release for the kind of sectarian abuse that some believe belongs in the 16th century. And Scottish police say that rates of domestic abuse soar whenever the two teams meet. Well, let's discuss this. Joining me now is Christine Somerville from the Rangers fan group Club 1872 and Angela Haggerty, who's the editor of Common Space and a Celtic season ticket holder. Welcome to both of you. Angela Haggerty, if I could start with you. Uh, we're going to see then this weekend the resumption of one of the fiercest uh, rivalries in football. Give us a sense, first of all, of how big an event an Old Fern derby is for Glasgow. Oh, it's, it's absolutely huge. I mean, it's... To say that there's there's not uh, a great deal of interest in the other fixtures in Scottish football, but when it comes to the the, um, the derby tomorrow, uh, all eyes are on Glasgow. So it's a massive event. It's it's a huge thing. It's something that even if you're not a football supporter, it's very much in your diary. You know that it's going to happen. Christine Somerville, a massive event and one that a lot of people will be looking forward to hugely. But some people might be concerned because it is a fixture that that can provoke some trouble or or trouble results as a result of it. Well, I don't see um, any more trouble than any any other large um, gathering of um, people who um, perhaps have had a few drinks and like to sing sing some songs and enjoy themselves. So I, I mean, I've been going to old firm games since uh, the 1970s, and I've never really seen any any real trouble. Angela Haggerty, would you agree with that? Do you think that this rivalry is any more explosive than, than other derbies in other cities across the country? Yeah, absolutely, I do, because I think it's underpinned by a historical um, thread of bigotry and racism that has blighted society in Scotland. So I think that uh, the, while all eyes are on the 90 minutes of that game, it doesn't stop at 90 minutes actually, and there are a lot of repercussions for this stuff. It's not just the same as any old gathering, it's not just any old songs. These songs mean something very specific in Scotland, and this is a deep societal problem. So I think that it's, it's maybe a little dismissive to say that it's no different from any other large gatherings. I think it's very different, and for anyone that gets caught up in, 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 in a fixture like this, anyone that experiences violence, abuse, any of that kind of stuff, and this is still quite common, um, out of, with the games as well. It's not just about the football. You see this all over social media. Celtic and Rangers have only met twice in the last four years because of Rangers' um, financial collapse, and yet the, the rivalry is no less because of that. So it's not just about this fixture, it's not just about a game of football, it's about much more than that in Scotland, and I think that we should acknowledge that. Uh, Christine Somerville, I noticed you giving a, a slight shake of your head at one point during that. What, what's your reaction there to what Angela Haggerty just said? Well, well uh, my understanding was that I was coming on um, here to talk about the, the game itself. Um, everybody knows Angela has a huge, huge chip in her shoulder and a huge agenda. Um, and to be quite frank, you know, I don't, I only want to talk about what's going to happen on the pitch and who's going to be the better team and who could win. Um, Angela doesn't seem all that interested in that. She seems more interested in what um, may happen after the game. Well, to, be, I, to, I, be, I just... to be fair to Angela, that's what was was what I was asking her about. Uh, Christine Somerville, apologies if, if uh, you believe that this conversation was going to take a different direction. Perhaps I could ask mm -hmm. you then about what you do think uh, will happen as far as the football itself is concerned at the weekend then. Well, I can only tell you what I hope will happen, um, and that is that uh, we play well. Um, obviously, if we win, uh, it will be fantastic. Um, if we don't, then I'm still delighted in the progress that the club has made over the last um, four years, especially in the last year. And, and Christi Christine Somerville, just to, to pick up on some of the points that have been made, if you feel... You clearly feel that there isn't as much of an issue as Angela Haggerty has thought. However, 
both Rangers and Celtic have both made efforts to try and clamp down on, on some of the issues surrounding sectarianism. They've uh, clamped down on the, on the singing of, uh, of what's been considered old partisan songs, for, for example. Have you noticed those changes having any impact? Um, frankly, no. Um, I think we, there was a time when we um, we didn't, uh, you know, we curtailed our songbook a, a little bit, and I do see that that has come back recently. But um, I'm afraid that I don't, I don't view songs as, as being necessarily offensive. Angela Haggerty, what do you say to that? I mean, what difference do you think that these songs can make and, and what efforts do you think are being made by the clubs but also beyond that by other authorities to, to try to, to reduce any tension? Well, it's, it's a massively controversial issue in Scotland because the SNP government got in the Offensive Behaviour at Football and Threatening Communications Act um, a couple of years ago as a result of trouble at Old Firm Games and this was an attempt to try and curb some of that by clamping down on the songs. Now, a lot of fans say that this breaches freedom of expression. They're very angry about it. They think it's about clamping down on political songs as well as songs that might have racist or sectarian content in them. Um, so it is a controversial one. There have there are attempts, I suppose, at some club level to stamp them out. Many people feel the clubs do not go far enough and that bigger punishment should take place to the clubs rather than the fans individually. Um, but I think what these songs do, uh, you know, some of them uh, are very offensive and they, they can have an effect on, on the intended victims, if you like. Um, so I think what they do is they carry on this rivalry and it's more than just a rivalry and I think that it hinders attempts to try and join two communities that have for decades um, been at complete loggerheads with one another. I think that the existence of the songs can be a hindrance to that. However, using the you know police authorities and all those kinds of things to try and stamp that out seems to only make it worse fans tend to get defensive about that stuff i think what you, you need to do is you need to go down the road of education you need to try and get these communities speaking to each other and that ultimately it's a long game but ultimately i think that's the only way you're going to start to have an impact on bigotry in scotland and christine somerville a last thought for you ahead of this big game um nervous excited i hope we do well um i'd like to see us win um i'll accept a draw but um as long as it's a good performance and um played in a good spirit then that's that's fine for me okay well christine somerville and angela haggerty thanks both very much indeed